Good evening, you all. I want to make a video about something, a comment, a comment I can later paste around wherever it's pertinent, about an issue I consider really important for the future of the internet, for the future of the use of social medias. Um, Congress lately has been um, making um, dedicating a lot of work towards the latest situation with Facebook where what is being observed, what is being looked at is the breaching of uh, privacy, quote unquote, the sharing our personal information uh, with companies that want to sell products and allowing or not allowing our our um, personal data to be shared and uh, so forth and there's been a an, uh, as we all know an unexpected uh, explosion uh, in uh, in the in the legal areas the legal sectors in Britain and the United States uh, regarding this um, with Facebook and others like Google and and you know all along I um, I kept thinking to myself that I, if it was normal that I didn't care so much <laughs> that my birth date or or what things I like uh, what my hobbies are uh, would be shared with companies, you know, I don't have to buy anything. I never felt obligated. I, I never felt like I'm some I'm at the mercy of capitalism um, And yet it's become a huge thing But all along I always I kept thinking to myself It seems that is not really the problem um, the problem is has more to do with um censoring your participation, um, controlling your use of social networks. I believe that is uh, what free speech is all about. And um, I never understood why they made it, why something to do with uh, such an advent, such an amazing discovery as the internet for the, the globalized communication among all peoples and all countries. Uh, did not cause the most important matter to be um, our freedom of speech, our being able to... I mean, there has been a little bit of talk about, um, you know, the, the danger of terrorism infiltrating, uh, being the so, so social networks being used for political uh, terroristic reasons, and I guess that is uh, in the right direction. Um, and yet, we seem to have avoided the part that would speak about uh, people's right to ex to not be censored in having diverging views or opposite views to trends uh, that are as popular, politically popular trends that are um, carrying the nation. And sometimes, you know, people say things that are. Um, for example, now, if you said anything to support Trump, uh, um, everybody would probably feel justified in coming over to your house and taping your mouth shut uh, because it's popular now to bash the president. So uh, I believe the freedom of speech is important and has always been uh, revered for uh, the importance of this issue uh, always standing its ground and people being able to regardless of what the popular movement or what people like or don't like hearing we can all speak our mind and say the truth about things as we feel them and um, I feel that uh, this is sadly uh, being completely skirted around not talked about not dealt with or perhaps poorly understood perhaps we don't really see how much power 
um, social networks actually have in controlling and um, dominating uh, uh, behind the scenes, un, un, um, unchecked. Anything that would become an agenda or a criteria for censorship or um, curtailing free speech, it seems that they have an immense power behind those glass buildings to uh, affect what people hear and stop from certain things from becoming diffused. And this has not been um, important enough in our country and uh, in, in Congress. Uh, instead, uh, what seemed to matter a lot to us is that um, what company would become richer than another company based on the information that they steal from us. Um, I think that has more to do with the bothersomeness, the nuisance of, yes, manipulating, controlling your activity, your freedom, your comfort in the use of the internet by invading your computer, your laptop, uh, um, you know, flooding your screens, your sites with, with a trickery to get you to use a certain uh, operating, well, whatever Microsoft is, I don't know what it is, it's a micro, it's not a operating system, it's whatever it is, uh, but in order, you know, if you use Chrome, then all these things are connected behind, behind the scenes so that they, they all work in some kind of network to, uh, having to do, yes, with what is being argued in Congress right now, the the um, violation of, of your personal information for for marketing exploitation but the part that really bothered me the most about that is that you spend your money on a device you are told that you have free access and that you have this immense wonderful opportunity to use all these creative venues and it seems like a wonderful explosion in the in, in communications that has potentials uh, to to do all sorts of wonderful things for the world and all of a sudden you are handicapped you are crippled by um, by ways that they trick you into uh, you know advertising and and uh, needing to needing to sign up for this or that so that then they can plug in their stuff on your in your computer this is the aspect that actually seems more invasive than obtaining your information for the enrichment of uh, corporations. But in any case, um, I made, um, I, I wrote a comment. Um, I'm really upset because I, I, I got suspended. This is the tenth time that Facebook suspends me because uh, of, I don't know what's going on. There's, a, I argue in a a um, political sovereign territorial sovereignty group between Argentinians and British and I'm really interested in politics and I'm very interested in the evolution of a more uh, communicative diplomacy that is truthful that breaks ground into new proposals that would resolve disputes and I got caught in this uh, argument because I see what is happening and I see how how one side is doing something to the other and uh, there's nobody that argues in English for them and so I, I got caught in, uh, in being the only American that is uh, shedding the light on things that the Argentinians maybe can't argue in, uh, in their favor or can't observe uh, is being done in the argument regarding the Malvinas Falklands dispute in any case so I become a little bit popular in these groups and they 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 pick on me, they insult me, they you know, and I've I've tumbled with it. I've I've reacted and acted the same way, and and through the years, literally, it's been like five or six years. I've learned to try to uh, control myself and not react. But now it's kind of too late, and I've become a personality. What they do is uh, they report me to Facebook on things that are questionably. Um, they, they're not really even breaches or offenses of any kind. They can be construed. They're words that can be construed if you really push it to something that may apply to one of these moral standard rules uh, 
of uh, code and behavior that they have in order to suspend people. <laughs> That's the first time he does that. Okay. And, um, and so I wrote something, and I'm going to read it because I probably couldn't cover it all if I try to if I try to improvise it here. So I'm going to pause right now and I'm going to position my comment and make my little speech, what I wrote and I've been sharing on the internet so that um, I can incorporate it into this this video now. Okay, I'm going to pause right now and I'm going to continue in a second because I haven't learned how to use uh, shortcut <laughs> shortcut <laughs> yet uh, well enough. Okay, here we go. Let me make sure that it's... Yeah, okay. Um, I, I wrote this for a guy named Vincent that has a, a video in which... Um, a channel, actually, in which he talks about discrimination, discrimination happening in Facebook or on the Internet and social networks regarding, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the more well-known problems or more talked about problems against uh, discrimination against women, against uh, people of diff different races or what have you, homosexuality. And so um, he was talking about how, um, how networks are, are perhaps are heading towards or government is heading towards uh, nailing this and uh, creating what I forget the name now a bill of rights no um, oh Jesus something uh, to do like an amendment I can't no not an amendment um, anyways um, let's just call it a law to uh, to do with uh, internet use and to prohibit to ban to make sure that uh, network social networks respect the equal rights um, laws of the country and um, you know I, I started thinking well you know th that is politically that has always been politi politically uh, incorrect in other words they have always politically tried to uh, not do that before if it will or, or what's going on that this 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 uh, this this guy was talking about I think it's irrelevant, and so I wrote him, uh, uh, to, it's irrelevant to the power that they actually have in censoring, sp in, 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 in free speech, uh, and, um, you know, the, the, the matter of uh, discrimination and, and uh, the, the rights to not be discriminated, I think I understand how it applies to other situations like school and work. Um, but I've always seen the internet like being on the street. We should be free to basically talk freely on the internet. And if you don't like what somebody says, you just push a button and you never have to talk to them ever again. I'm a little confused as to why there's so much uh, need to control and dominate what people say and behave on the internet. I think it's counterproductive. I think it's it's blocking us in and creating um, enclosures that um, that are not allowing for the potential that the internet is offering the world, in uh, at at higher, uh, more significant levels. But uh, so I wanted to get that idea across to Vincent, and I wrote them. I wrote him the following letter, and this is a comment I I've, I've been sharing on the internet. Um. The problem, Vincent, is that they don't censor people the obvious ways. They hide behind their moral behavior rules and reporting system. Something else is happening. The way they avoid detection is by letting members acquire opponents first. Then they let those people use their reporting system against you. Those people may be conspirators by either side. They could have contacts in Facebook. So what happens is that first you get singled out and become part of a list or group somewhere. Then each time they feel it's time to stop you, they wait for you to say something even medial that can be construed as a rule breaker 
or they go back in time and look for something you've said before in another conversation there c could be a word there the, um, there could be a word about there could be a word about sexuality or it could be anything that may sound like a hostile slur what they do is let you run first and build up a bank of unguarded speech from which they can later draw on it doesn't really matter as long as it any kind of creative writing subject to interpretation they suspend you but at the same time they suspend you but at the same time uh, want you to keep coming back because they study or learn from you how on earth are we going to have the free speech amendment cover or identify this sneaky behavior I can I can give you more information on my particular case if anyone is interested. I have been suspended about 10 times in the last three years, and they have all had to do with only one group, a political sovereignty fight between two countries in the world, one of which I defend, the other one is Britain, and we know there is a lot of British interest in Facebook. They also have seen that I make an unusually righteous argument argument about the rights of people who are not interested in exposure to homosexuality and claim the right for their children to stay clear of it until they are old enough to decide for themselves i have no doubt there are gay there are gay agenda people in facebook in the reporting department who have become aware of me and who interpret my activism which has to do with equal rights as a fight or opposition and are thus picking on me I would have to explain to you or whoever is reading this how I know it and why it's become obvious let's just say that all ten instances in which I have been wrongfully suspended followed shortly after posting after something well posted or said in a comment even without hostility or antagonism yet making a winning argument no one could argue against Knowing human nature, I am aware that that sometimes can cause more anger than someone repeating the same old argument people are used to fighting against. There isn't always a political seriousness in this, Vincent. It's not always about people who feel mature responsibility towards a cause. They are actually toying with people and laughing at the fact that they're unseen and safely hidden while we are impotent in defending ourselves. I have had them interact with me through their this is a mistake feature used for you to denote when they make a mistake in suspending you. What they did in response is send me additional statements that supposedly were reported selected to mock me with things I've written myself in the past with my own words in other words two times already they've replied to my protests apologetically saying that indeed they recognize I did not breach their community standards and both times they did not cancel my suspension as if to say we'll do what the hell we want anyways it's actually at a civil level a very serious matter they're abusing people they fr uh, they but frankly it's hard to tell if those people who are abusing members are more grounded outside facebook or are more to do with inside facebook i feel there is definitely things going on involving both inside and outside i don't know how our constitution is going to be able to protect us against this much well concealed well concealed power in communications technologies if you study carefully their rules and reporting system, you'll see that it's designed to hide behind a wall of anonymity. Your friends never know what has happened to you, and the person who reported you stays anonymous. They have made it in a way that they don't offer any manner of replying personally to your complaints. This means you're powerless before any injustice committed whether it be false reporting reporting or making them aware that a report against you is bogus by them not offering you any means to talk to anyone and tell them about an unusually unfair situation they can control and censor without giving away the elements that would reveal it 
they make it look like it's about something else. In other words, they make it look like it's about something else. In other words, if I were in California, I swear I'm so angry that I would go directly to their offices with people who supported me and demand speaking to someone about it. Because I know that if I call on the phone, they're just going to raise their peaking walls and then give me the runaround. Their trick is the moral code and behavior rules. Their trick is the moral code and behavior rules. They use its aspect of interpretation of things said as camouflage. Behind that smokescreen of indiscernibility, they can set up any kind of censorship directed at anyone they choose, while making their criteria completely invisible. Do we see what the problem is? So basically, what, I'm, what I've told Vincent is that the real problem with social networks uh, is that they probably uh, not intentionally created uh, their systems of, of uh, you know, behavior, punishment, and suspensions, and all this stuff uh, with the uh, right setup, you know, to, uh, um, <laughs> you know, uh, prevent pedophiles and things like that. Um, you know, and this kind of thinking, but I think that soon after they realized that through this shield, this this power that they have on letting you or not letting you comment or suspending you or simply uh, censoring you for, for uh, supposed good socially righteous reasons, uh, they can also uh, control the uh, the course the activities that go on in groups and so when groups appeared that have to do with politics with um, arguments uh, intellectual level of uh, you know uh, um, dissertations on uh, a different take uh, analysis on things that reveal uh, the uh, a, a, a truth or reveal a way of reasoning about something that reveals, that educates people on the truthfulness of a situation, and it starts becoming uh, sort of hot that way. I think that um, there probably are people who who see what's going on, who see that people are, for example, um, about to specify directly what part of government is involved with let's say an alliance with what part of Saudi Arabia and this is the the reason why um, uh, Yemen is still receiving you know we, we're saying things but they're always said generally but when people hear things very simply and um, simply uh, dispelling of the confusion or the sort of non-specific explanation of things they get excited and they want to follow on that truth they want things to change and so I believe that what's happening is that there are people who are controlling and seeing what happens in the more serious groups the more serious interactions in, in, in places like Facebook and they've taken to themselves to interfere. They've they've taken sides themselves. Uh, uh, for example, I believe that um, that uh, homosexuality is is just a part of human sexuality, and uh, it, but it occurs to the species for a reason that we uh, have not become very good at understanding and we have adopted um, ways of thinking about it that have resulted and ended in a belief that would say children need to learn to uh, like or accept homosexuality and you know this proposes a, a, a confrontation of by people who perhaps know better or understand it differently understand sexuality as something that is not a, a, a given uh, a God-given, uh, un unchangeable um, destiny that happens to you before birth or that you're fated 
to have, but something that actually develops and uh, what we learn from society, how we're raised, how our parents treat us, what our culture and society believes and has our parents treat us by, has a lot to do with the ideas that we will develop as children and how the, how we will feel about and what and what reactions what what education we get from society and from our parents in response to our intuitive misgivings and uh, you know there is a a science of a sexuality that would say there is a, a sort of a built-in wired misgiving or a uh, an intuitive aversion towards homosexuality that is in everybody's brain that we have always uh, perhaps not thought much of and just figured it was normal but in this movement this westernized this western uh, movement in sexuality in these past 40 years uh, towards uh, the acceptance of homosexuality we have taken a lot of things that instead of getting developed or understood better a certain way we have created different explanations or we have dismissed them in different ways in any case this presents a situation that uh, um, would be protected by the equal right of somebody feeling that they are they have misgivings, they have aversions, and they rather their children because they understand it's a sensitive issue during development. They don't necessarily want their children to get the message that um, it's just an option like anything else. Like they could be gay or they could not be gay, it doesn't really matter. They don't want that message to be taught to their children. They don't want to scare them of homosexuality. They don't want to certainly install any anger or rejection towards homosexuality but they don't want them to acquire the notion that it really doesn't matter one way or another which is what our society is teaching today so thank God for the rights that we have to um, you know to raise the children the way we feel uh, most fit most proper most intuitively most parental parentally um, and um, in in right, uh, how do you say this? Not endowed to, but um, thank God that we, as parents, we we still honor that that parents have the right to raise and educate their children. And even though society is kind of encroaching on this and 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 installing the teaching of homosexuality and and transgenderism and a bunch of idealist uh, based ideas into kindergarten and primary school there's been a movement in fact that has finally seized this and sees that something is not right and has started growing in in, in another area and and starting to uh, started to react in any case so the the equal the the right to not have your children exposed to a uh, an encouragement of homosexuality until they're later, rightfully so, is the right of every parent. And so it wouldn't surprise me that um, that in you, one can only imagine if you're American that there are there's a whole group of people that would see this as an attack on what they believe, as uh, backwards thinking or right wing or something like this. And uh, if they are empowered in the uh, censorship department of of um, of Facebook, and one can only imagine that there they are, you know, uh, <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg is is somewhere else, and their their boss is gay, you know, and and they're there, and they could easily have the freedom to play and toy with people who they don't personally like. And we know that when it comes to homosexuality, it seems that as a social cause, there is a lot more capriciousness, a lot more um, um, impetusness, um, more daringness, more uh, um, irreverence towards, uh, more cheekiness towards fighting and arguing and insulting. And uh, if often you see that when 
when people from uh, the, the gay movement um, have to confront a person that says, hey, I, I don't, I'm not happy with it, or I don't like it, or I, I tried it and it didn't make me happy, or I don't believe it, I don't think a child should be exposed to it. They don't just say, oh, well, you know, why should I care? They're not, my children or my brother is not exposed to them. They want to fight that person, you know. And so if you have a situation where they're censoring stuff that comes through Facebook or they're evaluating uh, if it's sexual harassment and they have the power and they happen to be uh, people that endorse, advocate, uh, social homosexuality and uh, adoption of children by gay parents and th these are all sensitive issues that shouldn't whimsically be in the power realm of people that want to defend the gay agenda and yet they end up there because they end up in the offices of Facebook and maybe somebody sees uh, you know the argument of uh, the right for example I wrote something on YouTube with somebody that um, I said you know parenthood and uh, parenthood and uh, matrimony, you know, uh, gay um, marriage. Marriage and parenthood are separate things when it comes to children. We should be able to marry. If you want to create a marriage for the same gender, uh, sure, you know, dolphins stay paired for life. Um, you know, we regardless of whether you believe that we socially perhaps should try to uh, have as le as least homosexuality as possible uh, because that would mean that somehow we are healthier as a species um, which could be a naturally a, a science n natural science discourse um, or whether you think we're past that we we could uh, we should have uh, the freedom to actually uh, make the best of that kind of life if we want to give ourselves that. Um, you know, whatever s argument you have, you can separate that, and we should separate it, I believe, from the, the argument or the area of raising our children, who when they're toddlers are looking at the genders, they look at their own gender, they look at mom, they look at dad, they look at how mom gets along with other women, they look at how dad gets along with other men. And so there is a whole different human science that has to do with child development, development of self, that is completely separate to, um, to marriage. And so I made this point in a... In a in a, in a YouTube video that I was watching earlier, that I was writing, commenting on earlier, and um, somebody well, gave me the standard defense, you know, and I can see just how impactful the, the ideas that have, you know, people have been educated by these last 30 years are, because you can see entire generations that believe and see things a certain way, so you know, I try to give my comments um, in a way that are as least confrontational as possible, maybe can open up the minds of people who who really uh, want to capriciously adhere to some ideas that have been installed over the last 30, 40 years. Uh, but when you say something in Facebook and somebody reports it as sexual harassment or they, they, they put it in the category, they put the report in the category of of sexuality um, and then it reaches to people that review it um, the reality is that very likely <laughs> they're, in, they're in Northern California <laughs> very likely there are people there who are staunch advocators of uh, you know or they're straight even if they're all of them are straight straight people today believe that they're thinking correctly by seeing homosexuality as a civil right, a, a civil choice of freedom, and that we're discriminating, and it doesn't, they, we have been stripped of looking at sexuality and homosexuality in terms of uh, physiology, uh, biology, um, natural sciences of, of the species, you know, it now, it, even though it's about sex, 
it only gets looked at as a civil right and even in our straight community and so they're staunch they're they're hardcore uh, they think they're 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 righteous and 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 they're doing something wonderful and protecting people who want to live homosexual homosexually so they don't really they might as well be gay because they they react almost the same way. Maybe they don't have as much uh, spitefulness or resentment in their um, in their reaction, and they they feel more noble about their defense, uh, defending the gay community. Uh, but you still run into the same problem. Your comment gets um, seen by these people, and they don't even look at what you're actually saying because. If you look at it word by word, you could perhaps see that it's all all the guy is saying is that everybody should be free to raise their children in the best way that they have learned and their society and their country has taught them to understand life by and he's not actually uh, condemning or segregating or bashing anybody. Uh, they don't see the absence of that and uh, they have to stand for gay rights because that's what we all do in America now you know as soon as we hear the word gay we have to take our, our take out our uh, you know, <laughs> leadership baton and, and you know people always want the easy victory you know that's really what it's about but I don't want to get into that people always want that's an easy one to support you know and it makes me feel great you know it makes me feel like I'm on the winning side and I really can I can make a real good argument to support that and you know uh, I don't have to spend too much energy and dedication to understand the things that are challenging or difficult to confront and uh, because people don't want to think about it. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's too difficult to face. The, and, and actually, actually, that's what's happening. The, the reality of why homosexuality increases in a society has to do with so many things that are about how we connect humanly do we touch each self, uh, each uh, it's, do we touch one another as families, as friends? Do we um, are we able to be intimately exposed and vulnerable? Are we contained? Are we loved? There's a lot of things that um, that are, are have to do, are in the psychological uh, area of, of personal development that have to do with what leads to the desire. Uh, for uh, homosexuality because it, homosexuality feels like it heals the self by having the validation of the same gender and so uh, after adolescence and sexuality is done, puberty has been completed uh, there are things that can no longer get matured uh, that don't continue to grow anymore and we're already thrown into the, the, the plane of, of the population and so, but yet we continue to, we may have started with, anyways, I don't want to change the subject, <laughs> um, but I think it behooves, for sure, it behooves the country to take the matter of uh, our ignorance towards why homosexuality actually does occur. Um, you know, it seems that we have been wanting to answer it quickly so we don't have to think about it anymore. So. We want to find the gay gene. We want to be able to say, um, and I have seen uh, atrocious videos where they compare, for example, twins, and you can see how the mom and the dad decided that one of the two was going to be gay and the other one, and the, and you see that there, the, the kid didn't, you know, when a kid goes and chooses a toy at this toy store, you know what kids do? They look to see which one the parent prefers. Is it, you know, we we have endowed uh, the, the way America is thinking. This is being talked about. It's it's really compelling because a lot of people are starting to uh, talk about this. Uh, we're teaching our children to choose their gender when they're nine uh, because there's this uh, uh, idea that um, we are so caught up in the right to have an opinion, to, to uh, be respected in our will, ironically, in a lot of ways, um, that we have endowed children with a decide, deciding power and uh, you know maybe the even if the kid chooses you know I used to uh, I used to wanna <laughs> I like the, the hats 
uh, maidens and witches wore for Halloween, and my dad freaked out uh, when I wanted to, not the firemen um, disguise for Halloween, but I wanted the witches. And you know, and then I felt my first love was this, was this girl that was absolutely incredible. I just never felt anything. I felt with sunlight, and my whole soul exploded. She was she was the sun itself. She was so wonderful. I was only fourteen. And so I remember that first falling, in, innocent child uh, falling in love, and I know that it's not so cut and dry. I think that we always carry with us something that is both, but not about either male or female. We have, we are born male, we're born female, and then we have things that are about our complementation but just because the other human being is our, our complement is the opposite gender, meaning a female, it doesn't mean that other side of us is female. You know, we're not divided in male and female. We are either leading with what we are, or we have more of things that are seen more in the other gender, but it's not about female and male. Uh, anyways, there's a... Uh, a lot to learn better about the human being and it's uh, it would be a tragedy uh, and we would continue to uh, create tragedies if we decide that we are so sure about things that they must be cemented and described and explained a certain way uh, so in any case that was uh, this is my little comment about free speech and how important it is to let people speak freely because we can only be better by hearing one another whatever we say we can only arrive to truth we can only dispel our mistakes correct our errors by listening to what people say and we need to first before censoring anybody be capable and strong enough of saying what that person is saying is not what I want to hear just like when we're walking on the street we don't need people in, in behind the glass buildings uh, deciding what people are going to hear or tell each other. That would be, uh, that would be a, dis a complete destruction of this amazing uh, leap of civilization that the Internet is bringing to the, the, the realm of communication for humanity. Um, we have to be as human as possible with it to get the maxim its maximum potential. And that means that first what we want is for people to be strong and clear about and empowered to not listen to anybody, to that, <laughs> to that person anymore. Uh, not, um, you know, we can't have a society of fearfulness. We're curtailing, we're crippling. Uh, we're cramping down the the potential of the internet by it being fearful parents that are afraid that a pedophile is going to come into our living room and our you know god it's it's terrible how we're thinking about it we have to be able to uh embrace it tell our kids um you know i don't want you to use the internet i don't want you to have a cell phone until you can handle adults an adult that can say anything to you and you still can't handle an adult saying anything to you that's why I'm here that's why I'm your parent right next to you we have to be more a morally strong society we can't think that we're going to better society through the power and the domination of our inventions we have to be strong people first and so it is absolutely uh, crucial that we let the internet be a vehicle and through which to grow and learn and correct ourselves and decide um, if somebody if what they're saying makes sense go somewhere else and research it confirm it um, you know not be trying to block what people say uh, so I hope I, I, I if I if my intuition serves me right uh, free speech is all about this is all about what I'm talking about right now 
the right the, it's absolutely important that you st stand in what was it Trafalgar Square and you speak your mind because through the freedom and openness and non-censorship of a person speaking freely their mind comes the, the a, a universe of possibility that civilization can be or any country can be or any people can be it's that simple thanks for your time my my cat says goodbye as well <laughs>